I'm making a series of videos that's testing the weight and strength of various lightweight concrete mixes. Now, in order for that information to be useful, we have to have something to compare it to, or a control test, and that's what I'm going to be making here. This is going to be a full strength, full weight mortar concrete, three parts sharp sand to one part Portland cement. This is going to be a full strength, full weight mortar concrete, three parts sharp sand to one part Portland cement. This is the sand product that I'll be working with here. Clean, washed, sterilized, free from impurities and not tumbled. When it's tumbled like play sand, it rounds the edges and that's not ideal for concrete. For strong concrete or mortar applications, you want the jagged irregular shape to the sand and that's what helps to give it strength. Let's get started now in mixing this three to one mortar mix. Definitely not a lightweight mix. And there we have our control brick. Three parts sand to one part Portland cement. Are we still recording? We are still recording. Great. Well, I'm glad you're here because I'm getting started now. This is the full strength, full weight concrete slide. It's actually mortar. Um, but this is going to be our control block or our test block to see how strong is concrete and mortar versus the lightweight counterparts that we can make for it. How light can we make it? 
How strong can we make it? And then I'm even interested in that relationship between weight and strength. Like, sure, I can make something crazy light, but it's so weak, it just breaks right away. But if I could even just add a small amount of strength, when you're talking about something so lightweight, well, we might be able to come up with an interesting relationship or ratio between weight versus strength. And ultimately, that's something that I'm interested in finding out here, testing all these lightweight aggregates like perlite and vermiculite and pumice stone and peat moss. And we're even doing aircrete. You can see I've got some stuff out here for making aircrete, which is basically like shaving cream like suds that you mix with a Portland cement slurry. And it's definitely going to be lightweight. And it will be interesting to see how strong it is versus how lightweight it is. But we need a control block. And that's what we've got here. So let's go ahead and get it out of the mold. This thing's going to be obnoxiously heavy. All right, that's pretty good. A couple of little voids there. I would have preferred to see that a little bit better consolidated. It's pretty good, but because it's the test block, the control block, I, I want it to be really good, you know? days have worn it down pretty good but uh when this is larger this is like a man-made stone of some kind and you use these for scraping edges on concrete i mean you should wear a mask i'm not going to scrape this right now but just to show you you run it along the edge especially on a green concrete product and by green i mean fresh this isn't fully cured yet what, I think this is about a week old now, uh, and that's not all that long. It needs a full month. Like, we're well on our way here, but it's still retaining moisture, and it's certainly not reached its full strength yet. Uh, so something like this scraping stone here is nice for just kind of cleaning up rough edges on a piece of concrete that you're working with. Uh, kind of like a little, uh, you know, trick of the trade kind of thing. Of course, you can also use, like, grinders with a diamond cup or all kinds of stuff for, you know, commercial concrete applications. But when you're working with concrete as a hobby, a lot of times the commercial tool is just, it's too much. It's more than you need. Like, using a grinder with a diamond cup on it, one, is dangerous as heck. Two, it makes such a mess. Like, such a mess. And you just don't need that kind of uh, problem. Like if you're going to be working on a high rise and you need to smooth out the concrete that it's built out of, for sure, use a diamond cup and even have, you know, the snorkel attachment to it so that it's a dust free environment and all that stuff. At home, something like this, I think it's like $20 at the local hardware store. One will last you a lifetime. I've done a crazy amount of work with this thing to wear it down this much. Normally that stone part is about three times as thick. Uh, and then again, you just use those for various applications, like running them along edges and stuff like that to clean it up. Works a little bit better than something like the trowel that I was using a minute ago. So anyway, here we have our test block. It's not ready to be weighed yet, and it's not ready to be broken, which is ultimately the goal for what I'm going after here. I want it to be fully cured before I weigh it. Uh, I don't want it to have any additional moisture in there. I want to get kind of a true weight of our finished product here in terms of finished weight, finished strength. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to set this aside, let it cure for a full month, and then uh, we'll be back 
with a future video where you're going to see me break this. At least we're going to learn something though. Break it not just because like I don't like it. Oh god. Okay. 